Okay. Um, so I guess welcome back everyone. And um, uh, Osman organizers, thanks for having me chair this session. Um, so there are two talks uh, during this session. Um, the, the first is by Hyun Kim from Rutgers on um, spaces of states in 3D and equals four th theories. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for uh, giving me a chance to uh, give a talk here. Um, uh, so today I'm going to talk about a certain aspects of moduli spaces of 3D unequals for gauge theories compactified on a Riemann surface. And this talk is going to be uh, based on the, based on a series of work uh, that I've done with Matt Bullimer and uh, Andrea Ferrari. Sorry. Great. So uh, this is the uh, setup for uh, today's talk. Uh, so I'm going to uh, discuss a certain class of 3D unequals full gauge theories confectified on a closed Juno G Riemann surface. And uh, this unequals full theory admits two types of uh, topological twists as discussed in um, last uh, yesterday's lecture uh, by Sam Raskin, uh, and these are called the topological A-twist or B-twist. And after the reduction, you get uh, two types of 1D quantum mechanics, and uh, uh, depending on the twist, and these quantum mechanics are sigma models on the remaining direction R into some space M, here, M is roughly speaking some modulized spaces of some vortices on the Riemann surfaces. And uh, we, we are going to study the Hilbert space of this quantum mechanics today in terms of the geometry of this uh, modulized space M. Uh, okay, so more precisely, uh, for a given 3D n equals four theories determined by the gauge group, a choice of gauge group and a representation R. Uh, this M can be thought of as a moduli space of solutions, a pair uh, connection A and a section phi to um, this, this VPS equations, modulo the G gauge symmetry. Here A is uh, a connection to a uh, connection on the, the principal G bundle and uh, uh, the, the phi is a section of the vector bundle associated to this, uh, this representations here. Um, and as I mentioned, this M is a moduli space of uh, what we call the generalized vortices on uh, the Riemann surface. And also, uh, as I will explain later, this uh, moduli space can be described algebraically as the moduli space of stable quasi map to uh, the Higgs branch, uh, MH, the Higgs branch of the 3D and equals to four theories. Uh, and uh, these moduli spaces play important roles in the study of, uh, for example, the quantum K theory, and also it has some uh, potential applications to the geometric Langlands correspondence. So uh, how do we study these moduli spaces? These moduli spaces are in general uh, non-compact and uh, also singular. So uh, how do we uh, going to study this? So the tool that I'm going to use today is uh, the quantity called the twisted indices. So these are uh, the set of numbers associated to uh, the setup of the, of the theory that I just mentioned, and which is nothing but the written index of the effective quantum mechanics that we have. So this twisted indices is de defined as a trace over the Hilbert space H uh, of our quantum mechanics, uh, which is a graded vector space. And this minus one to the F represent the Z2 grading. And in, in addition to that, we can have uh, various other gradings uh, uh, associated uh, with our uh, global symmetries of the theory uh, that I will represent with this parameter YI. So these are uh, well-defined integers as long as the theory is capped. And what's nice about these quantities, they can, they can be uh, computed very systematically via uh, the supersymmetric localization. So this quantity is first uh, defined uh, by uh, Nekrasov and Shota Shibli in the context of uh, the beta gauge correspondence. And later uh, it's developed uh, further uh, by those paper. Um, and um, there, are, there are very systematic ways to compute uh, these quantities explicitly. Uh, 
So the first of all, there are two useful uh, expressions for these computations. This, the first one is uh, the expression that is derived using the beta gauge correspondence, where this H is certain uh, rational functions, uh, which is evaluated at uh, certain polynomial equations. And you can also uh, derive, uh, you can also write down an uh, integral uh, formula that computes this quantity, um, which, is, which is given by this expression here. So there are a very well-defined framework that computes, uh, that, that can generate uh, some, some of the integers that is associated to this, uh, this moduli spaces. And one of the goals of today's talk is to provide a very precise geometric meaning of those twisted indices in terms of the uh, enumerative invariant of the moduli space M that I uh, just discussed. And also we are going to, uh, uh, I'm going to tell you how to uh, construct the, uh, this uh, Hilbert space as a graded factor space, um, which reproduces this, uh, whose dimension uh, gives rise to the twisted indices uh, in the stock here. So, um, Okay, so this is the uh, plan of today's talk. So first of all, I will discuss some general aspects of the moduli spaces of 3D and equals four theories on, on Riemann surface. And um, uh, in the second part of the talk, I will first of all uh, argue that uh, uh, the first certain class of uh, theories, uh, this twisted index compute uh, some of the uh, interesting invariants of the moduli space of quasi map that I just uh, uh, briefly uh, discussed. And I will show that they precisely match, uh, they precisely reproduce the integral representation here uh, of the twisted index computed from the supersymmetric localization. And one of the most interesting properties of the 3D n equals four gauge theories is, of course, uh, the mirror symmetry that has been discussed uh, a couple of times in this uh, workshop. And uh, we will show that this mirror symmetry implies um, extremely non-trivial relations among uh, those, those, those invariant of the moduli spaces. And I will uh, briefly, briefly mention something about the lever structure in this story. And finally, um, if you uh, look at this equation of the moduli space, you can see that uh, this moduli space depends on some parameter tau, valued in Dewar uh, Lie algebra of the gauge group. Um, and uh, this tau, uh, physically this tau is what characterizes the, the size of the vortices on the Riemann surface. And the moduli space has a, a very intricate dependence on this parameter tau. And algebraically, this tau uh, plays a role of the, uh, the determining the stability condition of the solutions. So um, I will argue that our twisted indices here uh, is piecewise constant in the space of this parameter tau, and I will derive the work causing formula uh, in this context. And finally, in the third part of the talk, um, I will uh, discuss some explicit construction of the, of the space of supersymmetric ground states here. Okay, so this is the, um, the plan. So uh, let's start from uh, uh, discussing some aspects of 3D and equals four gauge series compactified on a uh, closed uh, geometry Riemann surface. So, uh, so first of all, I'm going to describe uh, a class of theories that I'm going to uh, discuss today, which is closely related to the class of theories that is discussed in uh, Matt Blimmer's lecture uh, last week. So we are going to consider a quiver gauge theories, which uh, is given by a choice of some gauge group G and a quaternion, quaternionic representation R, which is the product of the unitary uh, gauge group. And uh, there are uh, associated uh, two hypercalar uh, manifold associated to the theory, which is the Higgs branch MH and the Coulomb branch, Coulomb branch MC. And what's most important for us will be this global symmetry, GH times GC. And we are going to consider uh, their maximal torus, TH times TC, that acts on the Hilbert space, uh, the Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch, respectively. And we are going to consider turning on generic mass and applied parameter associated to uh, uh, this global symmetry. Um, 
And for generic apply parameter, our Higgs branch uh, uh, is, uh, can be described as a uh, hyperkähler quotient like this. And uh, there will be one more important global symmetry that we are going to consider, which I will denote by this U1T uh, symmetry. And this is, a, this is a combination of U1H and U1C uh, group, uh, where this U1H and U1C is a maximal torus of SU2H and has to uh, as you to uh, see our symmetry of the 3D and equals to 4K series. So this global symmetry U1T, uh, roughly, roughly speaking, this rotates only this cotangent part of the uh, representation and leaves this part invariant. Uh, and I will uh, import some assumptions. So what I'm going to talk about today will be applicable for the theories that meet uh, this assumption. So our assumption is that the fixed loci of this TH action, TH action on the Higgs branch MH uh, are only the uh, isolated points for generic choice of the uh, FI parameter and the mass parameter. Uh, so the prototypical example is the SQCD. Uh, so the gauge group is UK, and the number of hypermultiplet uh, is larger than the rank of the gauge group. Okay. So this is the class of the theories that I'm going to discuss today. So now let's put the theory on uh, the Riemann surface. Uh, as I mentioned, there are uh, two topological trees on, on uh, the Riemann surface for 3D n equals 2 theories. Uh, these are called A and uh, B twists. And the A twist gives you what is called the A type quantum mechanics on R. Uh, they are uh, composed uh, uh, with this N equals, what is called the N equals 2,2 multiplets in 1D, 1D quantum mechanics. And after the B twist, you get the B type quantum mechanics, which are uh, composed of the N equals 0,4 multiplets in 1D uh, quantum mechanics. And these two are exchanged by the 3D mirror symmetry. And after the compactification, the moduli space of solutions uh, is decomposed into uh, the disjoint union uh, uh, labeled by uh, the degree of the gauge bundle here, where this D is, uh, can be thought of as some, some number valued, the integer valued in uh, the character lattice of the Coulomb match symmetry here. Um, here, the, um, um, the MD, the each of this MD is a space of solutions to the BPS equations with respect to two common supercharges of this uh, two type of twists, which we can think of as a 0, 0,2 uh, supercharges. And this MD uh, parameterizes the solutions to the, the, the following equations here. So as I mentioned, these are the uh, what describes the generalized vortices on the on the module on, on the uh, Juno three Riemann surfaces. Here, uh, the x and y's are the field that comes from the hypermultiplets. They are uh, the sections of uh, the, the vector bundles according to uh, uh, their representation. And the difference between the A and B twist is just the twisting by this. Uh, by this factor here where k, k is the canonical bundle on the Riemann surface. Um, so this uh, difference between us, these two are not so drastic in this uh, example, but if we consider the, uh, B, uh, the BPS equation for four supercharges, then the difference between these two are more drastic, but I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail uh, at the moment here. So as I mentioned, this description of the moduli space depends on this parameter tau, uh, but it turns out that the description is uh, simplest in the limit where uh, the tau uh, goes to infinity. So uh, we will assume uh, that we are in the chamber where tau goes to infinity for now, and then we will come back to the finite tau uh, later when we discuss the work crossing uh, of the indices. Okay, so... Uh, and algebraically, uh, we can uh, say that this moduli space MD is a moduli space of the stable quasi map. So, what are the quasi maps? So quasi maps uh, phi uh, into the, the target space MH, the Higgs branch of the theory, uh, is a collection of the following uh, uh, data. So, the first data is the holomorphic vector bundle, and the second data is the holomorphic sections phi comes from the uh, hypermultiplets of the uh, theory, and these are subject to the, of course, the complex moment of the uh, of the theory. 
and the quasi map phi is called stable if the uh, image of this map lies in the stable locus of the uh, target or for uh, for all uh, the points, but finitely many points on on those Riemann sets. So this stability condition of the target space can fail at finite number of points, which are essentially the uh, the center of the vortices on Riemann surfaces. Um, and uh, from the BPS equation, we uh, can uh, check that for the B twist, this moduli space can be identified as a moduli space of degree D, a stable quasi map to uh, the Higgs branches. This is this is actually MH, not MD, the Higgs branch uh, MH. And for the A twist, we uh, can say that the moduli space can be identified as a space of degree D uh, twisted uh, stable quasi map to MD, which has been studied uh, by. Uh, by uh, this 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 people, um, in the context in, in the context of the especially in the context of the quantum uh, quantum K theories there. Um, yeah, so the let's move on to the the, uh, the discussion of the twisted indices associated to uh, this uh, this series. So uh, we can ask what uh, the suspense integral uh, computes. Um, and this question leads us to the discussion of the virtual tangent space. So this virtual tangent space is constructed from the folk space of mass with degrees of freedom of defective quantum mechanics. And they fit into the following pair of complexes. So the first term comes from the uh, first term and the last term comes from the, uh, the vector multiplets of the theory. And then this, uh, the, in the middle, this term comes from the hypermultiplets of the theory. And then, the, for, for example, this first term here, the parameterizes the infinitesimal gauge transformation of the modular spaces. And here, e, uh, EV and EX and e, uh, XY and E phi are uh, the vector bundles uh, associated to uh, the representation of the vector multiplet and, uh, and, and the hyper multiplet. And uh, we can uh, say that the, uh, the K theory class of these complexes uh, are the virtual uh, tangent bundles. Uh, for example, uh, for the A twist, uh, due to the cell duality that relates these two spaces, we can uh, check that this half of the complex uh, are dual to the this half of the uh, complexes here. This means that the moduli space has so-called minus one shifted symplectic structure, uh, uh, like this here. Uh, this means that, uh, for example, for a smooth M, uh, the virtual tangent space reduces to the shifted cotangent bundle uh, 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 structure. Um, so this for A twist, this also implies that this uh, obstruction theory becomes a uh, symmetric obstru obstruction theory. So um, uh, the pass integral computes uh, uh, alternating sum of the Fox space constructed from the complex uh, the uh, and the twisted index. But the pass integral of the twist index. Uh, of the gauge series can be uh, identified with the virtual Euler characteristics given by this expression here, where this Q uh, is exponenti exponentiated FI parameter, uh, which corresponds to the degree counting parameters here. Okay. Um, the moduli space uh, MD is, of course, uh, singular and also non compact. So this uh, this, this quantity here is subtle uh, to define. So in order to compute uh, something meaningful, we uh, turn to the um, to the localization with respect to some of the global symmetries we have in the theory. Um, so as I mentioned uh, uh, in the earlier slide, um, uh, the, the moduli space MD admits uh, two global symmetry, uh, the TH uh, times U and T uh, actions here. Okay, so let's first look at the fixed flow side with respect to this U1T action. I can see there's something in the chat. Uh, we have only rear, yeah, we, we just, we just uh, turn on uh, rear FI parameters for this. Um, 
Yeah, so the fixed flow side of the U1 uh, T action, let's first discuss the fixed flow side of the U1 T actions. So as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, this U1 T uh, symmetry acts only on the cotangent part of the representation. And the fixed flow side of this action corresponds to the, or the moduli space corresponds to the quasi maps uh, uh, from Riemann surface to uh, what is called the compact core of the uh, inside the, uh, the Higgs branch here, okay. And for the A twist, uh, because of the uh, minus one shift shifted symplectic structure, uh, this uh, provides uh, us an in interpretation of the twisted index as a virtual chi t genus uh, of this uh, fixed, lo fixed locus mt here. So for example, in the limit t goes to one, when uh, mt is smooth, this reduces to the, the uh, all the characteristic of the modular spaces. Um, so what actually allows us to uh, do the computation is a localization with respect to uh, the symmetry TH, uh, which is the maximum torus of the Higgs branch symmetry here. Um, so the, the point on this fixed flow side are uh, parameterized by, first of all, the vector bundle, which is decomposed into the sum of the line bundles like this. And uh, there exists also on top of it, there exists rank three many non-vanishing component of the, uh, the section X, and then uh, the Y is set to be zero. Uh, and each fixed flow side represents a collection of uh, pairs uh, like this, and each of them represents the solution to the abelian vortex equations. So we can immediately write down uh, <clears throat> The fixed uh, locus, which is the uh, here I parameterizes uh, each of these fixed locus, and the, these are uh, this can be written as a product of the symmetric product of the Riemann surface uh, like this here, which is compact uh, and smooth. Um, and uh, on those fixed low side, this virtual tangent space T virtual uh, can be decomposed into the ordinary tangent space of this fixed locus plus some virtual normal bundles on it. Um, and using uh, this description, we can immediately write down uh, the, uh, the, the twist index in terms of the, uh, the equivariant integral here, um, uh, an integral over the uh, symmetric product here. Um, in order to evaluate this integral, we have a nice identity. We, we are going to use the nice identity due to Don Zegger, uh, which allows us to convert uh, any uh, integral on the symmetric product into uh, the certain residue integral of uh, any functions here. Uh, and using this, we can convert this expression here into the residue integral, uh, which is uh, of a form here. And in particular, we can check that uh, in this uh, particular expression, we uh, have a residue integral prescription, which selects a certain subset of the pores in this metamorphic functions here. And we can show that uh, these uh, pores are in, in one to one correspondence with the, uh, the fixed locus of the U1 um, fixed locus of the TH symmetry here. So we can show that, uh, in fact, the twisted index uh, re uh, reproduces the result that we uh, uh, computed in a geometric way. Um, okay, so we can also uh, the, talk about the mirror symmetry, which is one of the most interesting properties of the class of theories that um, we uh, are discussing now. So as uh, discussed several uh, a few times in, in this workshop, uh, the, uh, the mirror symmetry exchanges two different theories. Um, and in particular, uh, it exchanges the A twist and B twist and also the Higgs branch and Coulomb branch. And in particular, uh, the mass and the pi parameter here and the parameter T to T inverse here. So this duality, uh, if we apply this to uh, this invariance that we have been discussing, the duality implies uh, two highly non-trivial identities between uh, those indices, uh, especially uh, 
the uh, A twist indices are uh, matched with the B twist indices uh, by exchanging after exchanging the uh, M, which is the uh, the equivalent parameters with the degree counting parameter theta here. So this is an example of the, uh, the, the mirror symmetry. So this is the SQED2, which is also called the T of SU2 theory, which is known to be self-zero. So we just have one relations here. So for genus G, uh, G equals to two, we can explicitly calculate this expression using um, this better uh, gauge correspondence and we have this formula, uh, explicit formula like this here. And we can check that uh, these two expression, expressions are indeed the same uh, upon uh, exchanging this uh, mass, uh, mass parameter that I denoted A here with this uh, degree counting parameter Q. Yeah, and there's, there's a question in the chat from Jacques um, about okay. uh, what the contrary of integration is in the previous slide. Um, yeah. So yeah, actually, I'm going to discuss this when discuss this more um, uh, uh, in 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 when when I discuss the work causing uh, of the twisted indices. But roughly speaking, this uh, for example for uh, rank one theory, it's easy to describe the JK residue. This is called the JK residue integral, Jeffrey Cohen residue integral. And this integral picks only the positive charged uh, pores of this uh, the uh, the metamorphic functions. When uh, uh, so, first of all, this JK residue integral depends on some auxiliary parameter. So, when this auxiliary parameter is positive, you pick a positive charged pore from uh, this integral, and uh, you pick a negative charge pore otherwise. So I'm going to come back to this, this, this description in the uh, second part of the, my talk. So maybe we can discuss more uh, at that point there. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm going to say uh, something brief about the lab structure uh, in this context. So uh, uh, I mentioned that for n equals four theories, the twist indices compute the virtual Euler characteristics valued in the shifted cotangent bundle for the A twist and some other normal bundles in uh, B twisted case. And I also want to mention that you can also construct a 3D gauge theory that computes the holomorphic Euler characteristic valued on canonical bundles and powers of canonical bundles uh, on the moduli space. And this can be done by considering uh, n equals two supersymmetric gauge series with some effective, some non-zero effective transimus level that I will call K effective. Um, in general, uh, for the class of Kuiper theories that we have been uh, studying, um, the CS, the, the uh, transimus level can be assigned to each simple and U1 factors of the gauge group. So it could be very, it's not completely straightforward to find the each uh, the transimus level for each simple factors and neuron factors of the gauge group that reproduces this uh, this Euler characteristic value in this particular powers of the, uh, the canonical bundle. But uh, there is there exists a very systematic way to write down the UV gauge theory with some uh, uh, transimus coupling that computes this quantity here, starting from the 3D n equals four theories that. Uh, whose target space is Higgs branch. And we take a decoupling limit where roughly speaking, we integrate out half of the, uh, uh, the, the multiplets uh, of the theory. And then uh, uh, at the end, we will get 3D n equals two theories at a certain uh, transimus level. And using this, we can read off the uh, transimus levels that we have to impose for uh, the each uh, factors of the, uh, the, the gauge group that gives rise to this particular uh, quantity here. So for example, uh, for if we consider the SQCD theory, uh, we can check that this process gives you the n equals two 3D SQCD theory with following UV uh, couplings here. And uh, this is the theory that is associated to this, uh, uh, this invariance of the modular space. Uh, however, however, in this computations, um, there exists some important subtlety 
in identifying the twist index of the gauge theory with the holomorphic order characteristic, uh, this quantity here. So um, uh, this is because of the following fact. So let's consider the n equals two theory with uh, some non-trivial effective John Simons level. Then uh, if you look at the uh, BPS equation of this theory, the moduli space of BPS equations are in general, not just the, uh, the vortex equations, but uh, they are in general uh, uh, in the form of the disjoint union of the vortex equation uh, with some uh, other component, uh, other branches of the manifold, which is called the topological branch of the theory. So the points on this topological moduli space are solutions to unbroken gauge symmetries. Um, and the low end theory of the theory on this points is described by the effective chan simon theory with all the matters uh, are integrated out. And this uh, topological uh, branch should be described as the as a quotient step. So we can say this why more. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Why, why don't these other branches appear in three D n equals four? Sorry. Sorry. Can you uh, for um for for three D n equals four theories? Mm -hmm. um, why don't you have these extra components? Uh, because we are focusing on the type of the quiver theory where all the gauge symmetries are explicitly broken, uh, uh, they're completely broken there. So, yeah, in principle, there could be certain, some, some 3D n equals both theory with some broken gauge symmetries, but, um, but not for the class of theories that we have been discussing. Thanks. Um, yeah, so... We can describe this explicitly for uh, the U1 gauge theory uh, when uh, the effective John Simons level is, is non zero. And we can check that the BPS equations have two branches of solutions. So the first uh, branch is described by the point, by the solutions with, uh, 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 with the, the sections, uh, which is not. Uh, vanishing. And uh, as I mentioned uh, in the first part of the talk, this branch is described by the solutions of vertex equations. And for U1 case, this is just something that can be identified with the symmetric product of the curve. In this case, this U1 uh, symmetry is completely broken. Um, for k effective is non zero, we have another branch of solution, which is uh, characterized by the fact that this uh, section just completely vanishes here. And in this case, the, uh, the BPS equation just reduces to this equation. And uh, we can say that this branch parameterizes the holomorphic line bundles of the degree D. Okay, in this case, this U1 gauge group is unbroken. Uh, therefore, this effective quantum mechanics at uh, phi equals zero branch is a sigma model into the Picard step. And on top of that, we have a fluctuation of the uh, Carter multiplets phi, and this provides a, a sister equivalent complexes uh, E over, uh, over the, the moduli space, the, which I denoted as a Picard step. Okay. Um, and uh, so from this discussion, we can uh, expect that this twisted index of the gauge theory computes the sum of the contribution from the vertex moduli space and the sum of the contribution from the topological branches here. So the contribution from the vertex moduli space can be um, written uh, like this. And this comes from uh, the discussion that I, uh, uh, that we had in the first part of the talk. And uh, the contribution from the, uh, sorry, this was, this has to be the topological. The contribution from the topological part of the index can be uh, computed uh, in like uh, the expression like this. And this can be explicitly uh, uh, evaluated by decomposing this integral into the first uh, evaluating the integral on uh, t to the 2g. And uh, by picking after that, we can pick the uh, u1 uh, invariant part uh, of the expression, which can be done by uh, the performing the integral at x, x equals to zero and infinity. Okay. 
Um, and in fact, one can check that the sum of, if you evaluate the sum of two contributions, and you can check that this reproduces the residual integral representation of the twist indices. Um, in particular, uh, in the presence of non-zero effective transimus level, you can check that this JK residue integral prescription, uh, in fact, include uh, the contribution from the residue at zero equals to infinity here. So we uh, again, precisely produce the, um, the computation from the past integral in this case as well. Yeah, so let me move on to the discussion of the work crossing here. So let me go back to uh, the, the class of theories that we have been discussing. So in general, uh, all those moduli spaces that I have been discussing here depend on this parameter that I have been uh, calling tau here. Also, it, it appears uh, here uh, in the BPS equation. Uh, and we can see that uh, the description of this modular space, MD now labeled, labeled by this tau, change discontinuously as this tau crosses certain codimensional words in the space of uh, taus. So these, these, are, uh, these two are one of the simplest examples here. So for U1 gauge theory, it's just one uh, quite a multiply here. So this is just N equals two theories. And this describes the modular space of abelian vortices, one of the most simplest examples here. And you can check that uh, there exists war at here where tau tilde that I defined uh, uh, as this uh, particular combination, where this tau tilde is at uh, is at d, there is there exists a war, and you can check that uh, where when tau tilde is smaller than the the moduli space is completely empty, and when tau tilde is larger than the, the moduli space is given by the symmetric product here. And the second example is u two example, the rank two example uh, where phi is a section of this rank two vector bundle. And this is the modular space of this theory describes the modular space of rank two state repair, which has been extensively studied in the 90s by, uh, by these people here. Um, and what you can uh, see from this paper is that this papers is that um, there are also uh, words. Uh, so for example, when tau tilde is smaller than d over two, when, and when tau tilde is larger than d, the moduli spaces are, are completely empty. And in between uh, these two numbers, uh, there, there are some non-trivial moduli spaces, but every integers uh, between uh, this d over two and d, there exists a word. And then the description of the moduli space jumps as you cross uh, those words. At integer point in this in this space. So the question that I would like to ask here is how do we understand the work crossing in the 3D uh, gauge three point of view, especially from the point of view of the pass integral? And is there any universal formula that determines the work crossing in the space of tau? So uh, first of all, I would like to mention the existence of two uh, different um, Two different um, words in the in the theory. So one is defined in the space of uh, the mass and the pi parameter here, and then the one is the word in the space of the parameter tau that I have been uh, discussing here. So here uh, I compared uh, the the word structure, the chamber structures in the space of pi parameter, and uh, the word structure in the space of uh, the, the parameter tau here. So these two, uh, uh, the, the numbers are valued in the, uh, the same space, but the structure of the words are very, the, the what happens uh, at the words are, are very uh, different in general. So the words of this type, I think it has been uh, studied, uh, it has been discussed in uh, Matt Bullimer's lecture in the last uh, week. Uh, and for example, um, the, you can see that in the space of the pi parameter, there exist certain singularities where some tensionless domain words exist. Okay. And as uh, Matt discussed, the description of the Hilbert space may jump as you cross the words in the pi parameters. Uh, however, you can check that the separate parameter always sits in n equals to two vector multiplets. So it can be, it is, it can be always complexified with its dual photon. 
So the war in this uh, complex plane is always uh, more than co-dimension one. So you can always circumvent this war without changing the supersymmetric observables. So the supersymmetric observables, for example, the, the twisted indices are, are actually holomorphic in this complexified uh, parameters here. And in particular, there should be no war crossing uh, in, the, in, in, in this observables of dependence integrals. So this is very different from uh, the structure of the words that, uh, that we have in the plane of tau. So the, uh, what's different here is that the varying tau uh, in supersymmetric theory is a Q exact deformation. So in principle, uh, the index shouldn't depend on tau at all. Uh, but uh, you can check that there could be words uh, which are uh, co-dimension one. Uh, like in this example here, these are all co-dimensional one, and some non-compact column branches can open up uh, at this uh, singular point here. And therefore, the supersymmetric observables, for example, the twisted index, are uh, the piecewise constant in the space of tau. Okay. So there are uh, some remarks here. Um, so the uh, we can say that some of the supersymmetric ground states uh, in the Hilbert space can actually appear or disappear as tau cross the words that uh, that we just defined. And uh, in particular, this uh, the we can check that the twisted index in indices can jump discontinu discontinuously at worst only for theories with k effective uh, zero. Okay. So one of the reasons is that in this case, the theory contains the singlet monopole operators, and this is what generates the non-compact Coulomb branches at worst. So for example, the, for, for the uh, uh, 3D n equals to four theories that for the class of theories, the class of theories that we have to discuss in the first part of the talk, uh, exactly fall into this class of theories where this K effective is zero. Therefore, there could be some non-trivial uh, work crossing phenomena for the, this, this invariance here. So what happens for the theories with k effectives non-zero uh, is the following. So we recall that uh, this twist index uh, can be written as a sum of a contribution from uh, the vertex moduli space and uh, the contribution from the topological uh, uh, vacuum here. And what happens is that uh, each of these term uh, jumps, uh, can jump at worst, but the sum of these two are always invariant in the deformation of tau. Okay. So you can check from the uh, the, the pass integral point up here. Uh, so these are uh, some of the examples for uh, the U1 gauge series. What what exactly happens for uh, this case uh, for k effective is equal to zero. So for uh, the U1 gauge theory, the wall crossing formula can be written down very explicitly uh, in the point of view of the effective quantum mechanics. Um, you can, so as I mentioned in the, uh, the first part of the talk, the, uh, the index can be written as a sum of the residues of certain choice of pores, which is prescribed by the Jeffrey Cohen residue integral. So what does this do is that this, this prescription depends on this auxiliary parameter eta. And when eta is positive, it selects certain subset of pores like this three, uh, which comes from the Carter multiplet with positive charges. And when eta is negative, you pick uh, the other set of pores, which comes from uh, the uh, the, the, the Carter multiplet, uh, which is negatively charged, okay? And uh, by carefully analyzing the pass integral, is it, possible to, it is possible to show that this eta, the param auxiliary parameter eta, can be identified with this parameter tau uh, that we have been discussing here. Uh, so this means that when eta, for example, when eta is zero, this eta is zero is precisely the position of the, the words in the space of tau. So uh, the difference between uh, the index uh, in two words in the, in the space of tau um, are the difference between the residue integral of this pore and the residue integral of this pores here. So difference between this uh, can be rewritten as by the residue theorem 
um, as the integral of zero and infinity of this uh, uh, the of this uh, the integral domain uh, u. So integral domain here in in this u one case is the infinite cylinder because u is a uh, c star value. And using this analysis, you can explicitly write down the work crossing formula as a residue integral at u goes u minus infinity and plus infinity, which is the same as a zero and infinity in the uh, in the variable x. And you can uh, say that uh, this work crossing formula holds in general for the u one uh, gauge theory with effective level uh, zero. Um, so it's slightly more difficult to write down some general expression for uh, the higher rank uh, gauge group, the work constant for the higher rank gauge group. But it's, it's possible to study them uh, the example by example. So uh, one of the simplest example is the, uh, the U2, um, 3D n equals to 4 U2 gauge theory. It's just one hypermultiplet. Uh, and this is the theory whose twisted index computes the chi t genus of the moduli space of rank two stable pairs that I uh, uh, discussed earlier here. Uh, in this case, you can also uh, examine very carefully what happens at the, uh, uh, this, the integral at zero and infinity in the cylinder here. And you can check that the uh, twisted index depends on the chamber in this way. Uh, that dependence comes from uh, this factor here. And in fact, you can check that this formula precisely uh, agrees with the research uh, of this paper here where uh, they computed the Hodge polynomial, Hodge polynomials of the modular space of ring two stable pairs. Okay, so that was the uh, the end of the discussion for the um, uh, the work crossing of the twist indices. Uh, if there's no questions, then I will move on to uh, some explicit construction of the space of supersymmetric ground state. A quick question sure. for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, if if one's um, computing partition functions in the A or B twist. Um, Technically, you would set t to minus one. Um, right. You can. Is, uh, is yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise, like it's 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 a partition function in like the holomorphic twist or something. But um, right. if if you do set t to minus one, um, do you still get wall crossing? Um, yes. Yes. For um, yes, for the class of theories that we have been discussing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there, so there's there's no way to. Yeah, I think actually this is for just for the A twist and the B twist um, for the class of the theories that we have been discussing in three D n equals four. I think there's no there's no there's no work crossing. Yeah, I have to check the statement. Uh, yeah, but but in principle, yeah, there could be work crossing in the in the space of yeah, how, I, even maybe. if it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess I was um, trying to to ask. Also, if, if there's some canonical chamber or some, or some way to get an answer that doesn't depend on really yeah. I, I, an answer that doesn't depend on the choice of chamber and some limit would be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, for example, all the mirror symmetry uh, works only after you make a choice of the particular chambers in this tau spaces. So uh, in that sense, there is some canonical chambers that you can uh, um, Something works, but the but the chambers don't match on the two sides. Sorry, I, I'll I'll ask in the question answer session at the end. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but but yeah, it's, it's a statement is that there is a particular chamber that in in the tau space there uh there the mirror symmetry holds. So the chamber structure is completely different, but there is a particular chamber uh in a yeah that mm. that, that, that you can study all this uh the mirror symmetry between A and B. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, I will move on to the discussion of the space of supersymmetry ground state here. Uh, for the class of theories that we have been uh, discussing, in, in so class of theories, n equals to four theories that we have been discussing, uh, in fact, it is possible to go beyond the twisted indices and explicitly construct 
the uh, tenable space, uh, the space of asymmetric ground states as a graded uh, vector space, whose dimension computes the, the twisted indices. Um, for a discussion, for this discussion, we will uh, actually uh, the focus on the hub BPS states, which are uh, the states that preserves four out of eight uh, supercharges in 3D and equals to four series. And if you look at the structure of the supersymmetric multiplets of the 1D effective quantum mechanics, it's straightforward to identify the space of these half BPS states, uh, which I will denote by H, A, and B, which are graded by the two R symmetries of the theory. Um, and for the A twist, due to the, this minus one shifted uh, symplectic structure, you can uh, check that this uh, the space of half BPS states uh, can be written as certain hypercohomology of the fixed locus of U and T action. Uh, and when uh, MD is smooth, this just reduces uh, to the drum cohomology of the fixed locus of the U and T uh, actions. So this happens when uh, the, uh, uh, typically this happens when D is sufficiently large. Uh, and for the B twist, if you just consider the half DPS states, only the degree zero map contributes to the space of half DPS states. So uh, the, the space of ground states are uh, very uh, simple in this, um, this limit, and you can check that uh, the space of half BPS states can be identified with the double cohomology uh, of the Higgs fringe um, uh, valued in the G copies of the tangent bundle of the Higgs fringe. And this is uh, just, just as the same as what, what happens in Rodansky Witten theory. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the Higgs branch is non-compact, and these are uh, subtle to define, but uh, they can be explicitly computed after de deforming the supercharges uh, like this by turning on the mass parameters of the theory. Um, and we can take the limit where mass goes to infinity, and then we can obtain the perturbative ground states uh, uh, in the context of the Mohr theory. So in this limit, the wave, wave functions are uh, localized around the critical low side. And under our assumption that the fixed points of the TH section on the Higgs branch uh, should just consist of the isolated points, uh, we can check that the critical low side are compact and smooth. So for example, for A twist, I mentioned that the, uh, the critical low side are the product of the symmetric product of the Riemann surfaces. And uh, you can check that the uh, the 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 Hilbert space uh, reduces to the Dirac cohomology of the fixed loci, which is now uh, the smooth and compact here. Uh, and for the B twist, because the target space is this degree zero map, which is the Higgs branch itself, but the fixed locus are just the isolated points like this here. And you can check that the perturbative ground states. Is, uh, associated to, to this fixed locus are written uh, as this expression here, some symmetric powers of certain vector space VI, where VI is vector space determined by the precise field contents of the theory that I'm not going to uh, write down explicitly here. Okay. Um, so those are just perturbative ground states. And in general, uh, these states are subject to instant corrections that can potentially lift some of those uh, perturbative ground states due to the tunneling between uh, this fixed low side. Uh, however, if you just uh, study the Morse index of each fixed point, uh, you can show that uh, for the class of theories that we have been studying, and for this amount of supersymmetry, you can show that there are always no instant corrections for both twists, uh, for the, only for the half BPS states. And this is no longer true for if you consider the, the quarter BPS states or the theories with less amount of supersymmetry. And therefore, this perturbative state that I have just written here for A and B twists are exact ground states. So this is an uh, explicit example, just to show you that we can uh, write things down uh, explicitly as a graded vector space. For SQED, we find that the uh, from the description that I uh, just gave, the Hilbert space is given by uh, this expression here, 
as a sum of the contribution from each fixed loci of the, uh, uh, the flavor symmetry action here, um, where for the A twist, uh, the, it is uh, the, we have two grading, we, one with the homological grading and another grading with respect to this one P symmetry. And in addition to that, we have a grading uh, uh, for uh, this Coulomb branch symmetry. And for the B twist, we have additional grading uh, for this uh, Higgs branch symmetry that are denoted by XIC. And uh, the final remark is that uh, you can, of course, uh, compute the dimension of the graded flavor space, and this precisely produces the twist indices. And for, for example, uh, for the A twist, you can uh, check that uh, this computes the dimension of the graded hot structure of the moduli space, the, the, the Hilbert space we just described. Um, and it is also possible to check the mirror symmetry at the level of the graded Hilbert space and not just the twisted index as we uh, uh, discussed in the second part of the talk. And uh, this can be done explicitly for, for example, for the, uh, the abelian uh, gauge theories that meet uh, the assumptions uh, of our theories. Yeah, okay, that um, uh, was all I wanted to, to say, I will, I will stop. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's all thank you. Um, and are there any questions? I don't see any at the at the moment. Um, I I have one related to uh, to to Aspen's question earlier um, mm -hmm. about. Well, I I, think, I guess he asked about complexify parameters, um, but one one could turn on um, complex masses and complexify parameters. That's um, right. And these would. Uh, deform the, the Hilbert space on a surface. Um, mm -hmm. I guess like what you, what you'd be turning on is uh, is uh, either a bundle for the a non-trivial bundle for the flavor symmetry or, or a flat connection. Um, um, right. Do do you um, do you know how to incorporate that into the whole construction? Yeah. Um... Yeah, at the moment, uh, yeah, I don't have anything uh, concrete to 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 say. Um, yeah, at the moment, I don't I don't have anything uh, uh, intelligent to say about about that. Um, it, yeah, it looks like that might. Yeah. Um, sorry, just as a as a comment, it it looks like that might reduce. Uh, all the Hilbert spaces to something finite dimensional, um, as um, long as you're not on, on the sphere. Um, yeah, but Hilbert and, space is already finite dimensional in, in, in this case. Uh, oh. Yeah, for for the class of series, the, for the half BP space. Um, if the Higgs branch is not compact, the B twist yeah. on any surface should be infinite. Dimensional, it should contain functions on the Higgs. Um, yeah, after the localization with, uh, using this, uh, the U1P, uh, the, the, the TH action, um, if you consider the half PPS states, uh, the, I believe that yeah. all these states are, are, are finite dimensional. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me let me think about that. Um, and uh, Aswin has a question. Uh, yeah, this uh, I may have misunderstood something. So you said uh, under some assumption that uh, the moduli space M D is uh, non singular, that one can replace. Uh, uh, I think one of the Hilbert spaces, probably the A side Hilbert space, by the Dirac cohomology. Right? Is that basically the same assumption as saying if I turn on F I's 
and resolving the Higgs branch completely, or is it a different assumption? Uh, it's, a, it's a different assumption. So oh, it's yeah. a different assumption. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So even uh, even after uh, turning on the the generic mass and the parameter, the the uh, the whole modulized field. I, I was talking about the whole modulized space, not just the fixed low side. The whole modulized space. Uh, yeah. I see. And it can uh, still I be a singular. Yeah. But for a uh, large enough uh, d, uh, in general, they reduce something smooth. Uh, uh, the smooth, smooth modulized space. There, you can reduce the cohomology to the cohomology of the drum uh, complex. Okay. Thank you. Any um, any other questions? Um, I so so I, I sort of want to keep keep asking you things, but maybe it would yeah. um, if if I guess we have a little break now, um, I, and yeah, Sam's talk is in another half hour, so um, um, yeah, maybe we can let's uh, all thank like, Hyun and then have some sort of informal discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you again.